Maryland football's bowl dynasty is in danger after losing to Indiana and Bloomington. Men's soccer stays undefeated in conference play for its third straight win, but Maryland women's soccer and volleyball continue to struggle in conference play. We'll break all that down and more coming up on this edition of The Left Bench. I'm really proud of where we're going. We gotta fix up that front and get ourselves some good quality looks. She did her best and she had me more ever get done. Welcome back to the Left Bench presented by Terrible Sports Central. I'm Andrew McBride alongside my partner in crime, Ben Wolf. And Ben, I'm always super stoked to be behind the desk with you, but especially tonight for our first show of the semester. Always happy to be back behind the desk with you for the first time this year. We know it didn't have the happiest weekend, Maryland Volleyball. That's right, Ben. The pavilion was packed for Maryland's match with Iowa as the Turks were in search of their first conference win this season. Let's start this one right up with the first set. This one was tied 14 times, but the Hawkeyes outlast the Terps to take it 27 to 25. In the second, the Terps get out to an early lead. Iowa claws back, but Cindy Bryant puts the Terps back ahead and seals the second set win. Deja vu in the third set, more back and forth action. This time, the Hawkeyes get the win. With their backs against the walls, the Terps rally to claim the fourth set, but their comeback effort gets squashed in the fifth, as Iowa takes the fifth set and wins the match three to two holding Maryland winless in conference play. Bryant was the bright spot in the match. Here's what head coach Adam Hughes had to say about her performance. To solidify this role that she has as like a, a consistent starter, she's gonna have the ups and downs. She's gotta learn how that's gonna feel and manage it. And there's gonna be some outings that we're gonna have to win when she's not at her best. And tonight I told her in the locker room that uh, she gave us a shot. And um, you know, it's something that she can bank on and she did her best and shame we weren't able to get it done. To take a closer look at Maryland volleyball season thus far, we are joined by the Diamondbacks' Jake Cowderer, who was at the Pavilion this weekend. Jake, thanks for being here with us. Pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. So, Jake, this squad has some ballers. Samantha Schnitta leads the team in kills and service aces. Sydney Dower leads the team in assists. And you know what Sam Sire is capable of. But who else needs to step up as the season rolls on to give this team an extra bump in conference play? Yeah, guys, so I'll give you two players. Both are going to be sophomores. Let's start Sydney Bryant. Bryant did not play much as a freshman. She did have a great final match against Rutgers, really inspired some confidence, I think, in her. 18 kills, it was her season high. But she's really taken a jump so far this year. She's averaging more kills per set. She's coming off a huge 24-kill performance in that tough loss to Iowa. She, they need her to continue to be aggressive. She is also one of the best athletes on the team, undoubtedly. Her hops are huge, and she is a really terrific player. The other one, I would say, is Eva Rohrbach. Rohrbach is a middle blocker. She kind of took a little bit of a different path. She stepped in right away. Um, for Maryland last season as a freshman. She was actually top 10 in the Big Ten in blocks, so had a nice freshman year. She's been even, even better this year. She's averaging more digs per set. She's also done more offensively, averaging more kills per set. She had double-digit kills against Iowa. They need her to continue to step up for them. And Jake, Maryland hasn't gone down without a fight, taking Northwestern and Iowa to five sets, but weren't able to come out with wins in either match. So what do the Terps have to do to just dig deep and earn those five set wins? Yeah, so these five set losses, you can look at it as a positive, right, that they're right there, or you can look at it as a negative, that they're filling the close. And one thing that I found really interesting through these first two conference matchups is the manner in which they've lost the end of the fifth set. It's been both times, kills by the other team. So what does that tell me? I think two things. One, it's a little more obvious, right? The defense isn't as strong as it should be late in games. That could be Coach Hughes, I know, in the press conference talked about the pressure, of course, just human nature, right? You're at the end of a match. The other, I think, is that players are not being as aggressive. And this is a Terp team, you know, we have some great killers on this team. Schnitta, of course. You also have Bryant, Sire. For whatever reason, it seems like they're being a little more hesitant, again, going back to that human nature. But you notice that Schnitta has a lot of their kills late, which makes sense. The graduate student is a veteran of this team, right? but I think they need a more complete, holistic effort to get those kills late and stay aggressive. Makes sense. And Jake, they're a tough team sitting atop of the Big Ten standings, including new additions to the conference, Oregon and Washington. So how does the arrival of these new teams change the landscape of Big Ten volleyball and the gauntlet of teams the Terps have to face as the season rolls on? So there's no doubt it makes it tougher, mm -hmm. just to be candid about Maryland volleyball. Uh, USC, Oregon, these are great teams. Um, Oregon only has one loss. USC, I believe, 9-3. and three. Terps face them in a few weeks. Um, it should be a good one. But there's no doubt that the Terps, to really step up, they have to be able to compete with these teams, or else it's going to be the 19th straight year without an NCAA volleyball tournament appearance. Um, but I think one of the keys to the team is just gaining more consistency, right? We've seen flashes. They've shown so that they can really compete in these first two matchups. Unfortunately, they didn't come out on top for them. 
and it's teams that are considered a little bit of the weaker part of the Big Ten. But there's no doubt that the landscape improving does make it tougher for Maryland. And Coach Hughes, before the season, I talked to him. He said seven to eight wins in conference would be a goal. And Jake, overall, what does Maryland have to do to turn the ship around in Big Ten play and to earn consideration in getting a bid to the NCAA tournament? So I think it all comes down to consistency, right? You have some really good players on this team, Schnitta and Sire. Let's start with them, OK? Against Iowa, they both struggled killing-wise, right? They both hit below 200. That's just not going to cut it. And a winnable match, Bryant was the best player on the floor of that match. They really could have won that. They need them to be more consistent. I also think they need more consistent serving, right? Schnitta, as you mentioned, is leading in aces, which is great. She's also having a lot of service errors, which is OK to an extent, right? Use has talked about repeatedly. It's kind of a balance, right, with those errors and aces. The issue, I think, is that no one else is hitting as many aces, right, even close to Schnitta. I think Sire's the person who could step up in that manner. She's currently second on the team in aces. Look for her to step up. And just a more consistent effort, both from the veterans like Sire and Schnitta, and from, like, the sophomores, right, like Rohrbrock and Brian, who I talked about. Awesome. Well, Jake, that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for digging into Maryland Volleyball with us. Appreciate you guys having me. You can stay up to date with Jake's coverage on X at Jake Cowderer and at dbknews.com. Switching gears to football, the Terps took a trip out to Bloomington looking to get a win in conference play. But an inconsistent performance on both sides of the ball handed the Terps their first 0-2 start in Big Ten play under Mike Loxley. Maryland has the opportunity to jump out to an early lead, picking off Indiana's Curtis Rourke on the Hoosiers' first two drives. But the Terps can't capitalize, going three and out on both possessions. Indiana draws first blood on a one-yard TD by Miles Price. Then, Billy Edwards finds Caden Prather down the sideline for a 33-yard touchdown to knock the game up at seven. With under a minute on the clock, Indiana puts together a methodical 32-second touchdown drive to take a 14-7 lead entering the half. Third quarter now, Roman Hemby ties his longest TD rush with a 75-yard sprint to the house, tying the game at 21. But Indiana would find the end zone three more times causing the Terps to crawl back in their shells, serving a 42-28 defeat. But even in a poor outing for the Terps, there's been a light in the dark for Maryland's offense. Ty Felton has been on a tear. Wesley Snell joins us in Studio B to talk more about the wide receiver's hot start. Wesley? Yeah, guys, despite a rather quiet game on Saturday, Ty Felton is still on pace to put up some record-breaking numbers this season. So let's compare Felton to some notable wide receivers across college football through five games. First, let's look at Felton's numbers so far this season. Through five games, he has 642 yards, 46 receptions, and five touchdowns. He leads the Big Ten in receptions and receiving yards, which he leads by a mile. Washington's Denzel Boston in second with 412 yards. Now let's take a look at some big seasons. How about a Terp first? In 2017, DJ Moore had a 1,000 yard season, finishing with 1,033 which is third all-time for yards in a single season in Maryland history behind Torrey Smith and Marcus Badgett. Through five games in 2017, Moore had 32 receptions, 414 yards, and five touchdowns. As of now, Felton has 200 more yards through five games than Moore. So Maryland's single season record is in jeopardy this season. Outside of Maryland, let's look at Ohio State's Heisman finalist from a year ago, Marvin Harrison Jr. He led the Big Ten in receiving yards with 1,211 yards. Through his first five games last year, he tallied 25 receptions, 499 yards, and four touchdowns. His season also included three games of at least 160 yards. Felton numbers, Felton numbers are on pace to crush the number four overall pick. Marvin almost won the Heisman, but how about an actual Heisman winner in Devontae Smith? Through the first five games of his 2020 campaign, Smith recorded 45 receptions, which is one less than Felton through five games, 556 yards and four touchdowns. Felton has more yards and touchdowns through five games, but Smith unleashed. He had three games where he recorded at least 200 yards and finished the season with 1,856 yards and 23 touchdowns, which is the current SEC record for most yards and touchdowns in a single season. Felton's got a better start, but he'll have, to pick it, he'll have to kick it up a notch to take down the former Heisman winner. Finally, Jamar Chase, another key name when talking about big college seasons from receivers. In 2019, he finished with 84 receptions, 1,780 yards, and 20 touchdowns. Like Devontae Smith, Chase recorded at least 300 yards in three games, and one of them being the national championship game where he tallied 221 yards and two touchdowns in the blowout win against Clemson. Through his first five games of 2019, Chase had 30 receptions, 578 yards, and an impressive eight touchdowns. 
Chase had a monster start, and Felton is right there. And guys, I'm not talking a Heisman winning season, but it would be pretty cool to have a Maryland receiver finish the season with impressive number like these big name receivers we have seen in the past. All of these receiver mentions are big time NFL stars. So the question is, could Felton be next? Thanks, Wesley. And Ben, I do believe that Ty Felton could be the next great Maryland receiver. You've seen what this program could do with wide receivers like Stefan Diggs and DJ Moore, and I would not be surprised if he's at the top of the team's draft boards. I agree, but the only concern is that he didn't play much in the fourth quarter against Indiana. We don't know what the injury is or the severity, but if he's able to come back and keeps balling out like he is, we could, there's a possibility we, we, we're watching him on Sundays next year. You're right. That is something to keep an eye out for. And don't go anywhere, because we are going to tell you about Maryland men's soccer's record start in Big Ten Conference play. And the continuing struggles of women's soccer, despite stellar play from their goalkeeper, all after a short break. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge. To make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them when they learn something new and you can just see in their faces it's it's such an incredible moment it's those moments that are that are my favorite hey guys it's me isabella gomez filling in for smoky bear because he's got more to say than just only you can prevent wildfires like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Welcome back to The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Ben Wolf with Andrew McBride. And Andrew, I think Maryland women's soccer is still trying to find its identity under head coach Megan Ryan Nemzer. Yeah, Ben, the Terps have hit a downward spiral since the start of conference play, and that was evident on Sunday. The woes of Maryland women's soccer continues, as they are yet to win a Big Ten conference game, and that did not change on Sunday. Illinois put the lone goal in the back of the net off a penalty kick in the 16th minute. Liz Beersley makes four saves, totaling 51 this season, putting her second in saves in the Big Ten. Offensively, Maryland only got one shot off on goal. The Terps have not scored in Big Ten play since October 23, 2022, which was also their last win in conference play. Maryland will look to turn things around this Friday in Columbus when they take on Ohio State. A massive game in College Park, two all-time field hockey programs, number five Maryland, number two Northwestern, a showdown at the Plex. The Wildcats' attack zero in on the net early, taking advantage of a corner chance to convert on a go-ahead goal, courtesy of Ilsa Trump. Alyssa Glabasco and Annabelle Skubish lock down the cage all game long, stopping 14 more penalty corners. Terps get a late shot on goal, but it's not enough in this top five matchup as Northwestern gets the one nothing win over Maryland. Here's Missy Maharg after the loss team has two players and a coach that came back from Paris. That makes things very, very comfortable and very easy and very high performance. And I think you saw that. I mean, they're just sophisticated and like adults at time. And Maryland and open with two real, two real freshmen, which is rare right now with COVID and transfers and all that. So I'm really proud of where we're going. We've got to fix up that front and get ourselves some good quality looks. Sasho Sarafsi's squad continues to be the hottest team in College Park after its trip to Evanston amounting to its best start in Big Ten play since joining the conference. 12th minute of the match, Colin Griffith draws a penalty off a freed from Leon Cool. Cool, who has been on fire from the penalty mark, stepped up for the Terps and found the back of the net for the fourth consecutive time. Just five minutes later, Griffith finds himself one on one with the Northwestern keeper off a sweet back heel feed from Luca Costabile, doubling Maryland's lead within the first 20 minutes of the match. The Maryland defense was locking it down, but in the 64th minute, the Wildcats' second shot on goal beats Lauren Mack to get on the board, 
but it does not matter as the Terps take the 2-1 to one win. Maryland men's soccer got the win at Northwestern and had been on a tear as of late, winning its last three straight, and now sitting well within the nation's top 25. Ben Geffner joins us in Studio B with more on one of the team's newest stars with a neat background. Yeah guys, Maryland men's soccer is red hot and some of the early season success can be attributed to its key transfers. Max Rogers is certainly one of those guys. A worldwide journey spanning three continents, Rogers' rise to Big Ten soccer has been nothing short of remarkable. Max Rogers has served as an immediate impact transfer for Maryland men's soccer, but playing Big Ten sports, let alone as a collegiate athlete in America, was never in the cards. It's an interesting sort of journey because honestly I had no idea about the U.S. college system really up until halfway through senior year of high school. I had no clue. Rogers grew up a two-sport athlete, balancing cricket and soccer before eventually having to concentrate on one sport making a decision that would change the course of his life. It just happened to be that, you know, soccer and, and cricket were, were the ones that sort of I gravitated towards. I guess I always knew that I, I loved football. You know, I liked cricket, but there's, there's something I loved football or, or soccer. But, but again, it just seemed to sort of choose me. Rogers grew up in England before moving to Australia at a young age. A journey spanning three continents and tens of thousands of miles, Rogers' path to high-level D1 soccer may be seen as unorthodox, but the Terps graduate transfer believes everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I guess you could say I've turned into a bit of a journeyman. Um, but I think, you know, each of these stops uh, have been, they, while they appear random in certain ways, they have been quite intentional. Fordham was a great landing spot for me because it was a great entryway into, into the sort of college athletic scene. And then I think Yale was a, also a very intentional decision. Obviously, super strong academic school, but, but I knew that the program had a you know, reputation of breeding successful players. We were lucky enough to win at Fordham. I won the A-10 at Fordham and then won the um, Ivy League at Yale in my last year. And then I guess with this last move, you're putting all your chips on the table and you're saying, let me, let me prove it here. Tying back to that sort of need to prove to myself and prove to others, it's that sort of, you know, can you prove to everyone that you can get it done in the Big Ten, which is arguably the, the biggest and the, the brightest lights in college soccer. Max has been a tremendous asset to the team. When we had the opportunity to bring him in as a transfer, we were extremely excited about all of his qualities. Number one, his personality and mentality is, is top notch. He's a very mature, competitive guy, and, and he, he, he just brings a lot of energy on the field. He's constantly encouraging, commanding, demanding from his teammates. Rogers' intentional decisions have led him to College Park's Ludwig Field, another storied spot in his worldwide journey, and now a place he calls home. Those bright lights at Ludwig, you know, you hear people talk about him um, and you hear coach bark on about it and all the guys were talking about him in preseason and you're kind of like, oh, come on, guys. Like, it's just a just another field. But really, once, you, once you're out there and you're playing for Maryland uh, on Ludwig Field, it's, it's, it's special. From London to Sydney to America and everywhere in between, Max Rogers' success is rooted in his upbringing a big reason he's now thriving on the pitch. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Ben Geffner. Awesome stuff, Ben. And Ben, I think that Max Rogers certainly made the right decision to play for the Terps, and I'm sure the rest of the Maryland men's soccer squad is happy to have him on the team with the production he's been putting up this season. I totally agree. And when, when you hear journeyman, people kind of give it a negative connotation, but this was definitely the right path for Max, and Maryland is very ha happy to have him this year. You're right on that. After the break, Ben and I will head to Studio B to play our second edition of Guess Who. And Ben, let me tell you, I am confident in our abilities to win this a second time around. We will not be denied. And of course, we've got some awards to give out and the top five plays of the week. So stay right here. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as 
you think we've done for you. tell my son I love you every single day. I love you. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Welcome back to The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. Ben Wolf with Andrew McBride, and we have jumped over to Studio B to take down our producers once again in a fun game of Guess Who. Yeah, Ben, we went four for four last time, and I know we can do it again. Here's how it works. Our producers will put up a zoomed-in picture of Terps in action, and we will put our heads together. Pound it. Noggin. Shout out, dude. Perfect. We've got four attempts, and I don't think we will get four big booms after this one is over. Why don't we get started, Ben? All right, let's throw the first one up here. Ooh. Ooh. 12. Okay, 12, so it's definitely football. Um, like Dante Trader is the first thing that comes. You think football? Why do you think football? Because the mesh. if I recall, yeah, got they got the, the in mesh in the, um, in the jersey numbers. I like Dante um, Trader for number 12. But yeah, I, I, I think that's a, that's a pretty good guess. You think this guess. is his arm right here? I know yeah, we're not I trying to paint the whole picture. Could be some underarm, uh, like his... Okay. his um, T-shirt he's yeah. wearing under. Right, let's um, go, let's yeah. Dante Trader. Dante Trader. Yeah. Lock it in. Boom. Hey. Let's one go. for one. That's All a right. start. That's a start. All right. I think we're ready for the uh, the second picture second up one. here. Okay. Volleyball. Volleyball. She's blonde. Look. Okay. Cindy Dowler. I have an inkling. Yeah. I have an inkling. Talking a lot about There's not a lot. Earlier. There's not a lot of other details we got here. I'm surprised we yeah. could even see it. But I like this the little. The hair is here. She got the hand wrap. Did she had a hand injury or anything like that? No, just Sydney Dowler. <laughs> you got me there, but yeah, I, right. don't I don't know. I think we just go for it. All right, let's go. Sydney, Sydney Dowler. Dowler. That is what two, we were talking four, about. Two. I don't know why you guys even try us anymore. All right, let's go to the third one. Let's keep it up. I think okay. it's got to be Sasha. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge forearm, yeah. whatever it is. So, I, I think that, that the looks baseball. like the, the soccer field. It does. I'm, he's got. I, Pretty sure he always wearing the Apple Watch. Yes, it's not I never uniform. realized his big forearms though. But yeah. <laughs> you want to lock wow. it in? Yeah, sure. Sasha Swarovski, number three. My man, My three for dog. three. All three right, three for three. One more, and I don't even think we can play this game anymore. Let's see if we can. Let's see. Let's it. see if we can bat a thousand. All right. <laughs> and All right. it's not looking good for May us so have far. Spoke a little um, too soon. Red Nike shirt. Okay. I like Tiger Woods. That's the only thing I could say, but I don't know where this green thing comes from. Well, it, it, it can't be. It's Maryland's be an Under Armour school, You're so right. I don't know. It could be could be a throwback. It could be, you know, we were talking earlier. Could 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 they throw a, a producer in there? Maybe like. Could it be know. a producer? Maybe, I don't know. They've got uh, me beat right now. Ricky running a marathon, maybe. Ooh, no. Ricky does run marathons. Yeah. We take a They're shot in the dark and do it. Yeah, I'll lock it in. Why Ricky not? on the run. Let's see it. Wow. All right. Not even close. We were not even way close. too deep there. I got a little um, too, a little too analytical. We got a little right too ahead of ourselves, but hey, but, we'll take three yeah, for four. You know, I think we still win. I don't think I, I think we can so ever as play well. this game again. Yeah. Two and zero, best of three. That's how it works right. around here. My apologies. Well, for the Ben, it's always a blast in Studio B. But now let's get serious and hand out some awards. Our trip of the week is Maryland men's soccer leading goal scorer Leon Cool. An electrifying penalty kick goal in the 11th minute against Northwestern boosted the Terps in their 2-1 win. Cool also scored the lone goal in Maryland's matchup last week against Indiana. Cool has scored on every shot he has taken this season. He deserves an NIL deal from Wendy's because he's foe for foe. Congrats to Leon Cool on being named our Terp of the Week.
Now taking it to the gridiron, our pro terp of the week is rookie cornerback Tarheep Still. Still earned his first career start for the Los Angeles Chargers, who took on the reigning Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. Still recorded his first NFL sack, accompanied by five total tackles on the day. Congrats to Tarheeb Still on being named our pro turf of the week. Well, Ben, to quote the great LeBron James, it's about damn time. Why don't you get us started with our top five players from the weekend? Oh, I'd love to. All right, here we go at number five. We got Leon Cool, and man, is this guy cool under pressure. Four for four from the penalty mark. This guy is automatic. Here we go in slow motion. Damn, you put some zip on that ball. At number four, we got Liz Beardsley diving save. Look at her defending that net. It's too bad the Maryland women's soccer offense can't keep up with her production because she is truly a star in front of that net. She's really been awesome. But here we go at number three. We got Roman Hemby's 75 yard touchdown. I know Rome wasn't built in the day, but if they had Roman Hemby's speed, I know that they would have finished it in one day. At number two, someone get Drake on the phone because we're going back to back with back to back Liz Beardsley saves. Look at the hustle she puts in to protect the net on this one. She is really something else. And here at number one, we got Colin Griffith's goal from this nasty back heel feed from Luca Costabile. Man, this guy truly thread the needle. Here we go in slow motion. Ooh, no look. Now that's pretty sweet right there. And now we'll do for this edition of The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. Drew Owens and Eddie Calkins will have you covered next week at the desk. Be sure to keep tabs on all our coverage on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and X. We'll see you next time.